All right. Fire away. Oh, come on. I'm going to say it. Oh, it's hot, D-Lab. I'm going to how to do this. I'm going to wait for the, the five questions at once. So. See? What's next? Oh, ask questions. Okay. Okay. Hall of Fame with D-Lab. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah, Coach, last uh, practice before for the uh, first exhibition game, uh, how did it go and uh, how are you feeling heading into that game after wrapping up the last practice? Well, you know, we'll still we'll get some work in tomorrow, get the get the guys ready to go uh, play Friday night. Again, all, uh, like I said, we just we, we need to see these guys execute. Um, you know, we'll, we'll run our base stuff and let these guys go out and play so we can get a fair evaluation. But I feel pretty good at where we're at. I'm excited to see these guys play. And uh, what are some of the areas you you know? I didn't want to look at everything, but sure. I mean, what are what are some of the priority areas that you're looking forward to uh, see play and evaluate? You kind of, you know, it's really all of it. I mean, obviously, you want a lot of things. How we're playing up front, both sides of the line of scrimmage, and in the kicking game, guys that cover. You know, we, we, because that, that's ultimately what it comes down to. A lot of guys that are in that middle part of the roster, you know, are they going to be on the active? Are they going to be up on game day? You got to help them fourth down. And so th those will be critical downs watching in the cover game. So special teams would be a place to you know keep our eyes on for us. To Absolutely. Kind of, to kind of Absolutely. Step forward for you. There. Yes, sir. That, that uh, that's huge because the guys you know whether you get receivers out there, DBs, running backs, guys that are outside to be gunners on the punt team, guys that can run down different spots on kickoff. Uh, that's really valuable to us. Michael. Yeah. Uh, first, do you anticipate playing Matt Ryan on Friday and guys like Brady Jarrett, or are you going to sit down? We're going to make that decision tomorrow. So. Um, feel pretty good about where we're at, some of those veterans. And again, it's, you know, we got to make roster moves after this game and the next one. So you kind of sitting there weighing the options and the, the risk reward, certain guys we need to see so we can make sound decisions on next week. So if they do play, you imagine it being not much, right? I, I won't put a time frame on it. And, uh, so yesterday, we can follow up again today. Matt LaFleur responded to. You're yeah, no, so uh, Bassey told me. Think, he said he was no, Matt, Matt's a great friend of mine. Um, you know, he obviously took him all night to think of something that he thought was funny. <laughs> but, uh, but again, you know, who knows? His guy Daryl and him probably sat there and tried to think of something funny. I'm sure it was a little, little, little lame. But um, what is something with the hair? Just yeah, I'm gray. I've been going gray since 20. I said I don't, I don't look like I got black shoe polish on my hair. So go figure. But no, I, I, I love Matt before. Just joking, he's one of, one of my good friends in the business, and he's done a hell of a job up in Green Bay. I think he's, what is he, 26 and 6 in two years? Pretty damn good. So it was just, we're just joking around. Good friend. I talked to him this morning on the way in. So uh, wish him the best up in Green Bay. But again, he's, it did take him a day. In all seriousness, I mean, the fact that the two of you are close and are able to kind of go back and forth like this, you know, probably for the enjoyment of us. Uh, yeah, it's strange. Kevin, got to give you something. Yeah. Is that, I mean, did you guys ever think like, Back when you were working together in Tennessee, like, oh man, like this could be fun to do this one day, like you know. Uh, not really, you know that that, you know, year year one. I mean, just didn't think of it. I mean, I know, like most coaches in here, we all have dreams. Players, coaches, uh, it is cool. It's good to see uh, good things happen to good people, and what Matt's done up there. But not not in the moment. No, we were just trying to get things done and and do a good job for the Titans and, and you know win football games. So appreciative of my time spent with him. Scott. I know that it's just a, a preseason game, but given the fact that you're you're going to be uh, facing so many guys that you've worked with for so long, what's that experience going to be like, even at this stage of the season? Yeah, um, obviously if it was a regular season game, it'd be a little bit different, right? There'd be probably a million different narratives you could write between coaches and players and all the people, uh, the relationships on both sides. Um, really looking forward to catching up with a lot of those guys. You know, spent 10 years there, get to see a lot of those guys. You know, Joey and Matt and Haas in the equipment room, guys I worked with for a long time, guys in their operations staff, you know, Brent Akers, guys that you just you, you develop lifelong friendships with. And then obviously the coaches, you spend a lot of hours and there's a lot of good coaches over there. So it'll be good to see them pregame. And you know, when we kick off, you know, we, we understand what we're trying to do. Both teams are going to try to uh, beat the crap out of each other and, and the best team win. But uh, and we understand what it is. It's preseason. And we, we, we got to get, and I have a ton of respect for that program. And we need to get fair evaluations on our guys to see if we can make the best roster decisions. I know that 
it's all part of a larger um, process when you're looking at um, at this team. But how like does a preseason game weigh more, or you know, like does it weigh a little bit more than like in your practice tape? How does that fit into your sure. overall evaluation? Yeah, it's a it's a big part of it for me because. Like we were just talking about when, when D. Lev was asking about the special teams. I mean, you know, we're not tackling live right now. You know, we we will be the first guys. A lot of these guys, have, first time, excuse me. A lot of these guys have tackled in a long time, and so I think you'll see around. You know, you'll be you just hope we're we're sound there. Not a lot of missed tackles. You just want a clean operation. You don't want to see a million flags. And it, it, but it's, there's nothing that can replace that. You know, the quarterback's going to feel pressure for the first time and actually get hit get tackled to the ground, receivers, some of the catches over the middle, a little different consequences when you're, you're able to get tackled. So it's just it's a great step to get us ready to go for the regular season. Processing time, you know, for pre-snap and, and for these rookies, I think that's something that we talk a lot about with guys early in their careers is processing what they need to before right. anything ever happens. How do you feel like this group is coming along in, in that regard? And, and do you feel like it's something that it, these preseason games really show you that and, and how yeah. they evolved? Yeah, they do. Because when you're putting in a new system, and whether, you know, it's the veterans and they've been around, you know, they just go back and, you know, certain formations and certain plays, they, they can have a recall. Okay, I called it here with this coach or whatever. They, they can go back. And some of these guys, everything's foreign to them. And you really want to get them past the memorization part. You know, you break the huddle. It's a new language is what you're doing. Whether you're offense, defense, special teams, you do. You create different languages in football. So you want to get them past the memorization part so they can line up and actually now start executing their technique and fundamentals, how to win the rep. And, you know, there's going to be adrenaline. See the guys that can handle it. There's an adrenaline dump that your, your body goes through. You'll, you'll see the guys huffing and puffing two plays into it because there's nerves, and that's normal. And, you, and then you want to see, can they rescue themselves? Nobody's out there on, on the field they got to rescue themselves. And so it, it is a huge uh, part of the evaluation process because it it's the next step. Now, to this point, we've tried to put them in much of those environments as we can, and, and they've handled it pretty well. But I'm sure you'll see guys, will, guys are going to make pre-snap uh, mistakes. It won't be intentional. And you just hope that you get the guys that can minimize that and, and not repeat offenders. Yeah, certain players and different life experiences, you know, that you go through, and that, that's, that's my, probably my best analogy because you can't tell them what to do when they're out there. I mean, they, they break the huddle. There's a play clock. I mean, that's the thing about football where, you know, these guys, I, I, you know, sometimes I think football players don't get enough credit how smart they are and how quickly they got to make uh, decisions because the old adage, I mean, obviously it, it is a physical game and there's a little bit of that old meathead or caveman aspect where you're just going to crush somebody, and there's still aspect to it, but... There's a lot of critical thinking that goes and judgment, and you've got to make a decision and roll with it. And it's just a lot of different things in my life experiences, being around the game, different things, different sports, whatever it is, and that's kind of that's how I view it. it doesn't say I'm right. It's just how my mind works. Uh, kind of following up with Scott's question a little bit, is there any advantage having coach for the team and then facing them? Do you feel like you have them again or vice versa, that they kind of know you, or is it completely different you know, in the preseason, I, I, I guess the best way to put it, um, I know what they're about, and they had a pretty good idea of what we're about over here. And so there's a lot of mutual respect. And there won't be a lot of trickery going on Friday night. I mean, people can do what they want. That's the beautiful thing about football. You get to make decisions and how you want to attack this, how we want to handle the preseason. That's fun. you got 32 different flavors. But it's a healthy respect, and we know what both teams are about, and that's why I'm glad that we're playing them in the preseason. So... Good, good, it's a good evaluation for us because I know what we're up against. And I know you're going to be evaluating all the rookies, but when it comes to your first round pick, Kyle Pitts, do you evaluate him any differently or look at him a little bit harder being a first rounder? No. I don't give Kyle. He's over there. I don't give Kyle any special treatment. No. It's all the rookies. You know, we get – sure, we got our expectations for all of them, but it's it's just keeping things in perspective. You know, how they come along. I mean, I, I, I think the other day or maybe it was last week, I can't remember the days are running together now, Talk about keeping perspective. You know, everybody wants to be so quick to make snap judgments and label this, and you, you get narrative scars. That's just not true. You know, 
whether it happens Friday night and guy has eight catches. I've seen that. Our quarterback throws 350 yards. Well, may have been in soft two minutes. They may have been down three possessions. And, you know, there's a lot of narratives being built. But ultimately, the story will be told, you know, as the season's over and hopefully when these guys have long careers. Yeah, well, it, it, it all goes, you know, it all, there's a lot of things that play into that because that, that is the reality of a game, right? You don't, you don't have three deep, not like college football, uh, you know, where you got all those guys up on game day. So this guy's your, you got two backup left tackles, what it is. Like you got to have a guy that can play both tackles, um, a guy that can play both guards, a guy that can play center, maybe play guard, or a guy, you know, there's the most valuable guys that are, you know, if you go these guys in the league that are backup sector, four position guys that you feel comfortable, guy goes down, he can play guard. The guy goes down, you know, you, so you mix and match, and that's just life in the NFL. Um, it's very rare you get the same five every, every snap of the season. So it's huge being able to adapt. Kelly? I was going to ask about Kyle as well. How have you seen him kind of grow, even just this short amount of time, these two weeks um, since he's been here? Well, it's really all the rookies. Uh, there's a there's a big adjustment, and you know they're going to go through. They're going to struggle certain days. You want to see how they respond. Um, it's not going to be perfect for them. It's a, it's a foreign environment. Obviously, uh, the competitions. Uh, everybody's pretty good in the NFL. The guys that play on Sundays, and you want to see how they adapt. And it's not overreacting. Keeping the big picture in sight, and you want to make sure that they're improving. And they're not they're not just all of a sudden they reach a point where you're getting diminishing returns, and you got to look at it. Player not handle this. We ask him to do too much, but overall, with this rookie class, I'm pleased. But they're rookies, and they got a ways to go. But it's, it, it is a mature rookie class, and I'm excited to see him play in the preseason. You mentioned that a couple of times that it is a really mature rookie class. How is, does he kind of maybe embody that? Have you seen him? Yeah, you got to give him credit and give his parents credit. I mean, uh, you know, when we did all the work pre-draft with Kyle. You know, I, he's certainly more mature than I was at 20 years old. Um, I don't, he doesn't turn 21, I, I think, believe, until we get to London. So go figure. I, I, I certainly wouldn't uh, didn't have these expectations and this much responsibility at that age. I was running around Chapel Hill. So um, you got to give him credit. He is a mature kid. He's not a kid. He's a man. So. Jacob? Yeah, and so only three preseason games this year. Has that kind of changed the benchmarks of, like, by this week in the preseason, you want to know this about certain guys? Or Not really. Um, again, I think you've seen the last five or six seasons, a lot of people, a lot of the old narratives, hey, you know, week three is the dress rehearsal. You've seen people do it a lot of different ways, and I like that. There's a lot of creativity, and ultimately, we got to make the best decision for our team, where we're at, year one, every factor, your veterans, what they need, what they don't, how do we make the right evaluation. So I think you'll see, it'll be interesting around the league to see what every team does, because everybody's got their own philosophy. That's what makes this game fun, and you get in these spots. Um, and then once you make those decisions, you got to roll with it because otherwise you can certainly second guess yourself if, if you do play somebody and something happens and you're you know we've all seen that before. But I, I think that's a fun part of the job. Everybody gets to make decisions they think is best for their team, and it'll be interesting to watch because they're going to be probably 32 different philosophies. Michael. Yeah, I want to go back to Kyle Pitts for a second. You've talked a lot about different players. I've already asked about them, like different plans and different programs that you have for guys. When you drafted Pitts, you obviously have plans for him too. Where is he? Comparative to where you hoped he would be, he's coming along. I mean, he's way to say it. I mean, he's he's right where he needs to be. If that's the best way to answer it, you know. So, uh, with all the rookies, and it's not Kyle, and I know he gets a lot of attention because we put the fourth pick in the draft in him. But you know, we need you want every year to, to have multiple guys in your in your draft class, and the guys that make up the heart of your roster. Uh, you want to see how they progress, and it's going to be different. There are going to be some guys that flash earlier. It doesn't matter where they get picked, fifth round, maybe an undrafted guy. It doesn't mean the second, third, or fourth round pick or first round pick is behind. It's just you've got to keep perspective in it. And uh, with all those guys, pretty pleased. But, again, there's a lot of unknown. So, you know, it's a, it's a, it'll be answered ultimately as the season plays out for them. I guess more curious just because maybe more than some of the other rookies, you know, Ade's gotten 
a bunch of time lately with the first team. He's been a guy who really, since day one out here, he's been working with Matt Ryan in different spots. So I just was wondering well, where he's he fit in, you know, with that. Well, it's all those guys. We mix and match. I don't care who's you know out there. You got to give them all a shot. Um, certainly, he gets attention because he's so damn tall. But, uh, but all those guys, they're all getting fair shots. And, and again, it's it's not just Kyle. It's the entire rookie class. And I, I get it. Like he is the fourth pick, but very pleased with how the whole class is doing. And again, ultimately, those are make that judgment at the end of the season. There'll be hot takes after you know week one to week two, whatever it is. Let's see where it goes by the end of the season. Oh, your first one. Do you like all right, there we go. This is the lifetime of Willie Beaver, uh, right tackle. What do you all see for, from him and uh, uh, expect, you know, uh, from him? From him yeah, you know, I mean, Willie's done a nice job playing the right tackle, and then now you've got to – so you look at it Friday night, and we need to play him a left tackle now because it's not fair to Jalen. He's been getting run as a right tackle. We need to see Jalen play. So we'll see Jalen play right tackle. We'll see Willie some left tackle. And then ultimately, as McGarry gets worked back in there, we got to make a decision over the weekend. Yeah, what's the best? What's the best for the team? You know, do you, do you keep do you guys still fighting out? And then Spriggs will come back in the, in the fold next week too. So, um, but, you know, ultimately Willie, does he win the right tackle spot? If he doesn't, can he be our swing tackle? And he's going to have a hell of an opportunity. And we're very happy with what Willie's done so far. That's a position where you look like you got some pretty good competition. We do. All up and down the, you know, mm-hmm. the outside of Yes, we do. Yeah, and I'm very pleased with where the competition is going, and I'll be fired up to see Caleb next week. You coming to Miami? Yeah, I'll be there. All right. Where are you staying? I actually, I won't put that on record. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious if you're going to be down in South Beach or you're going to be uh, near the facility. Out, yeah, okay. You never know. I ain't in my 20s no more. Okay, <laughs> making sure. Well, I used to be in South Beach. Yeah. Uh, All right. He's got a yacht reserve for Monday. Yeah, he uh, might. He uh, might. Uh, Yeah, how they operate. You don't want to get them. Can they get the call in? Uh, you know, the way we may package certain certain plays or uh, operationally decision making. Uh, you know, you hope to get some two minute drives in the game. See them operate that way. That way situational football, and you know, good. It'll be interesting because it's they're in different parts of their career. Like AJ's played in, in NFL games, and you got to keep that perspective with Felipe. Like he, he's done a nice job, and then, but he is a rookie. Like he's there, there's going to be struggles. Some of the mistakes, uh, but both those guys happy with. But they're they're at different points in their career, and we'll we'll see hopefully after the next couple of games where they're at. All right. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All.